So, so it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I will describe some uh, some uh, progress which is uh, something done along the last five years, more or less. And uh, on, on the problem of simulating a uh, lattice gauge theory for data. Uh, there have been some, some progress also using other platforms, other realizations, other ideas. I will comment on it on the, uh, hopefully at the end, but uh, and, and focus on uh, uh, for the atom. So, so the outline is the following. I will first uh, say a few words about quantum simulations, analog versus digital, maybe. Uh, then I will uh, uh, describe roughly uh, 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 the system, the physical system that we are, we are interested in using, which is called atoms with very low temperature which are uh, brought into uh, optical lattices, uh, uh, and the view shortly uh, uh, the Hamiltonian formulation of lattice edge theory, so uh, printing up the, the scene, and then we will get to the main issue, which is how to, uh, how to construct something like this, for to be on uh, both analog simulations and, and uh, maybe shorter uh, uh, digital simulations. I will discuss uh, the requirements for such a simulator, uh, 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 the ways one and implement that uh, uh, implement a local gate device, which is the essential ingredient, the basic ingredient of such a theory, and and uh, 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 how one to construct uh, uh, the, the details of, of the simulation. Um, remark on some progress on uh, digital simulations and describe uh, some uh, current experiments which are ongoing or, or building up on. on on uh, uh, having such a device. So, so uh, quantum simulation. So, so we are discussing here analog uh, rather than a, a quantum computer, which means essentially that one has uh, one has a certain system with one hand, uh, which has a certain Hamiltonian that vertices and a set of links. Uh, we need matter and gauge pins. So the matter is situated at the uh, vertices. Uh, uh, why uh, the gauge pins, you can think about them as living on the links. And so if we have such a, a lattice, again, uh, we have links with degrees of freedom here, the yellow degrees of freedom here, uh, which uh, are described generally by some uh, a matrix, some abelian or non-abelian uh, matrix, which corresponds to some gauge group. And, and uh, there is certain algebra in this uh, gate group, I'll uh, come back to this a bit later, which is satisfied by this gate group. And, and this theory, uh, and, this, uh, and, and we need to uh, impose some conditions on having the theory uh, gauge invariant under local gauge transformation, meaning that when we apply a local transformation at each one of those vertices, which is independent, which has vertices which have another local transformation, uh, the whole set of uh, our whole equation has to be invariant under under such transformations, which essentially means that at each vertex we need to uh, uh, impose the conservation of the Gauss flux of the flux which is coming out of each of those vertices. So this is a discrete version of uh, the Gauss uh, the Gauss law. At the vertices we have uh, we have the matter field that I mentioned sitting here. So this could be described by some sort of some kind of a spinel, depending on the spin of the system. It could be a fermionic uh, 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 matter sitting in the vertices. And again, uh, uh, local gauge transformations are essentially multiplying this uh, spinel by some kind of a phase or a matrix uh, depending on the on the size of the of the spinel. And now, if one wants to construct a Hamiltonian which describes uh, both the uh, gauge fields, the macro fields, and the interaction, one has to choose some structure uh, which is invariant under such transformations. Then uh, the gauge field dynamics is described by, uh, by the so called uh, uh, electric part, which is something that corresponds to E square at, at the link. This is a, a local quantity. But there is something which is uh, uh, crucial to this uh, approach, which is, which is that if one to add here a B square term to the uh, electromagnetic or more generally non abelian case, uh, this uh, B square term becomes a, a non local uh, quantity, meaning it depends on the four values on a plaquette. So it depends on the U's, on, on four U's which are sitting at, the, at four uh, different links on the product of these four U's, and we'll see it in the moment. 
So this will be the, the gate, the contribution of the gauge in this degrees of freedom of the cloud. And, and to it, we, we have to add the, the matter degrees of freedom, which, are, which can, the matter can hop along those, those links. When once it hops from one side to another side, the link has to also interact with the gate degrees of freedom. And, and this uh, is manifested by having, instead of uh, interhopping, a term that looks like psi dagger psi multiplied by uh, the degrees of freedom of the gauge field, which are uh, those uh, unitary matrix matrices. Uh, and so this is the, the interaction terms. It contains both the kinetic, the free kinetic, and the interaction with the, with, with the field. And we will have some uh, mass, mass terms. Let, let's try to, to demonstrate this thing. It might look a little bit complicated. So that's the simple toy, toy example. Suppose we have just two sides, neighboring sides. And suppose we have a fermion sitting in, a fermion sitting there, and the turn to hop from here to here carries a mass turn, and, and you have these hopping turns, the annealing from here, a fermion, and create a field, and, and backwards. So, uh, and this theory is invariant under global transformations, because we can multiply the, the, the field by a phase, the side dagger is multiplied by the uh, complex conjugate of this phase, and, and these theorems here actually annihilate these two phases at one, so it's invariant under global uh, gate transformations, but it will not be invariant under local gate transformations. So we want to uh, we want to promote this symmetry to be a global uh, a local gate transformation, meaning we want to choose this uh, lambda n to be dependent on the location of the vertex. So we, we make it a, a function of n. And in order to have our theory now again invariant under gauge transformations, we have to add some new fields. That's how the new field is introduced. So we introduce, uh, uh, in this case, our field will be into the eye some, some variable, an angular variable phi, phi n in the middle. And then we uh, 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 rewrite our interaction in the following form. We have psi u psi. And if on top of this transformation, which is local, we also require that the phase in the U is changing like a phi plus grad lambda, this is the discrete, the discrete version of the gauge transformation, uh, we can see that something like this is, is gauge invariant. So together, uh, uh, the matter and, and the gauge will be pretty well gauge invariant. That's actually a, 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 a discrete description of the so-called minimal coupling on the lattice. Uh, so, uh, what, what else do we need? We need the, the energy, the kinetic energy of the field. So, the kinetic energy of the field is square, if we had before, the, the phi n, phi n, e to the phi n, e to the i phi. Uh, phi is, 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 a conjugate, is conjugate to, to the uh, angular momentum in the z direction. If phi is something which looks like the vector potential, then the electric field which is conjugate to it, to it will be just Lz, it has to be here Lz square. So, so the, uh, uh, the kinetic term is essentially equivalent of having a rigid rotator or a particle which is, which is rotating in a plane. This is, of course, just for the simplest case of a U1 uh, H theory. And uh, we have, as I mentioned, the plaquette terms. Again, the degrees of freedom of, of the gauge fields, which would be taking the uh, four degrees of freedom of the, on the links the unitary matrices, the unitary matrices of e to the i prime, in this case, plug it here in, we get something that looks like cosine of the differences of the phase of the, of the uh, angles at the four sides. If one looks at this term over here, this is essentially equivalent to the rotor of A. So if one expands this, this is essentially this term over here is a discretized uh, a version of what we are familiar with, with the magnetic field B squared of the of the field. So, collecting everything together, we, we obtain a theory which is called compact QED. Why compact? Because the uh, unitaries are e to the i phi, so phi, phi is a periodic angle, which means that the electric field, which is conjugate to phi, uh, gets value, takes value of uh, uh, integer values, so, so it's compact and the field is, is quantized, these are the two quantized variables. And the total Hamiltonian, which is the contribution of the electric energy, magnetic energy, that's the first line, the gauge matter interaction, that's the second line, and the mass term over here, which is the third line. I will say a little bit later what are the minus signs of this now. So, quantum simulations. Uh, 
Okay, so to the idea, as we know, it was, was introduced by Feynman, and, and the impression is that actually he had in mind already uh, this problem of having, uh, uh, of simulating uh, thin Cuban problems on, on, on such quantum simulators, maybe not uh, quantum computers, but really simulators which are already quantum uh, mechanical. And so what do we need, actually? We need a theory which, is, uh, which, which contains two species, two particles, uh, uh, one species should be uh, fermions, and, and they should represent matter, matter that we represent, the other species should be bosonic, the bosonic species should, which should represent the gauge fields, and, and, and in, in this model, having we call atoms, we already have the natural, we, could, we can trap both fermions and bosons. We need local gauge environments, that's a, a, a crucial ingredient here, and, and uh, I, I'll show you that this can be obtained either as an exact symmetry, or as a low energy effective symmetry. And finally, we have something which was already demonstrated in other models. We need to have a situation that at a large, at, at large scales, the, the theory uh, gives rise again or to, to the causal structure, the well-known, the statistical causal structure in the continuum limit. And, and this would be, again, something that drives the tech at uh, very long scales or low, sufficiently low energy com uh, compared with the uh, type of uh, scale. So the picture we have in mind is something like this. Take the schematic lattice structure that we have seen before, and now make it a real system. So the vertices uh, uh, put some fermions, real particles, real fermions, and the links put bosons, which should represent somehow uh, the gauge fields. They have the right statistics. They are uh, uh, draft by, by uh, rather than having a single lattice, where well, one would have a, a, a dual lattice or super lattice, which means that uh, for, certain, for, the, for the bosons, the lattice is, uh, has minimized along the links, and for the fermions, it will have minimized along, along the vertices. Okay, so this would be sort of the system that uh, we should be looking at. And then the question is how one, describe, how one obtains for something like this uh, uh, gauge invariance, uh, local gauge invariance. So I'll describe the method which gives rise to, to exact gauge invariance, but I, I should mention that uh, it's, it's interesting and that's actually the, the first uh, uh, method we have actually obtained the, the, full, uh, the full system, the full uh, uh, model uh, uh, of uh, uh, compact QED. It's interesting to think about uh, uh, gauge symmetries as something which arises in a similar way as, as, uh, uh, as, as the causal structure uh, uh, of space-time. In this case, uh, the gauge symmetries are not exact, but there is a certain energy gap between a certain uh, sub-hindered space of states which are invariant under uh, gauge transformations. And then, because there is a gap here, uh, uh, these excited states which uh, uh, excited structure which, does, which is not gauge invariant, uh, does not contribute, and uh, something like that can be obtained by adding a constraint to the, to the Hamiltonian which imposes a, a, a Gauss's law. And then, and then at low energies, one obtains effectively a, a, a low energy sector which is invariant, invariant under gate formations. So I will not describe it, but this is kind of one, one, uh, why, one way to impose something, to obtain something like this. But instead, I will show how one can obtain from atomic symmetries, from the symmetries which are already there in the system, one, how one can obtain a local gauge environment. So one can do this both for the abelian case and the non-abelian case, and it works as follows. So let's look first on links, on the uh, dynamics that takes place on links. So suppose this is a, a schematic uh, uh, picture of a link, we have the matter degrees of freedom of fermion here, a fermion there, and some uh, bosonic uh, particles sitting there in the middle. Um, so, uh, uh, which means that because uh, the fermions is not com are not completely localized at the edge points of uh, the vertices, they will have a tail which overlaps with the overlaps with the bosons which are sitting here in the middle. And each time they hop from one one side to another side, they will essentially interact for a certain amount of time with the bosons here here in the middle. And the thing which will uh, determine the interaction with the bosons is essentially. Uh, uh, can be can be controlled by by, uh, uh, by uh, can, can be controlled by uh, by by changing the interaction scale. So if you think about the scattering process, which takes place over here, where a fermion and a bosons are are scattering from each other, and another boson and a fermion are jumping to the to the next uh, two sides. 
So uh, let's make it more kind of specific. So we, we think about uh, a fermion sitting here, this is precisely another fermion sitting on the right hand side, and two, two uh, bosonic fields uh, sitting in the center, uh, which can be thought about as, as two internal levels of the, of the atoms. Now we want to have a situation where when a particle is jumping from here to here, because, it can, because these particles carry, char carry charge, uh, uh, have to change the electric field along the link. Maybe because if the charge is changing by plus one, the electric field has to grow or, or, or by, by plus one, one as well. And this is described by the angular momentum in the z direction of the particles which are sitting inside. LZ is just the, the electric field in this case. So, uh, and if we, if the particle jumps in the other direction, it means that we want to have a situation where LZ is uh, increased by a value of 1, again, by the same reasoning. However, the problem is that if the fermion is jumping from here to here, we can have two terms. We can have the situation where either the uh, angular momentum increases by 1 or decreases by 1. One of the processes will conserve gain invariance, the other one will not, because it doesn't respect charge conservation. So essentially what we want is, is from, from out of four scattering terms, we want to have only two scattering terms, which uh, are the ones which uh, uh, respect uh, uh, charge conservation. And to do this, we can, we can uh, uh, make use of the fact that why, why the, the thermal scattering from the bosons, it has to conserve the internal and in, intrinsic angular momentum. Uh, the scattering between the fermions and bosons I didn't describe so far is essentially uh, an S scattering. So, so the angular momentum, including the internal angular momentum, is conserved in each scattering uh, separately. So we choose uh, internal states, uh, say C and D. Remember, we have a, a certain species which of fermions sitting either here or here, and it has two internal levels, C or D, where C describes the fermion sitting here and D corresponds to a fermion sitting here. You know, two species uh, of a spino, of the, uh, a basic spino, spin half. And then we have two degrees of freedom which will describe a uh, 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 situation having uh, angular momentum of certain values. And uh, by, by uh, having a process that uh, uh, the fermion jumps from here to here, since angular momentum is conserved and here it goes up, here angular momentum has to go down. So we get only this term over here. And if we have the other forces, the other direction, again, angular momentum goes down, and, and which means that in the internal states, the internal space of the boson it will have to go up. So we get the other term. So by, by uh, 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 using uh, the conservation of internal angular momentum, we essentially got rid of two terms, and the interaction along the link will become essentially gauge invariant under local, local gauge transformations because it conserves charge. Now, to see this explicitly, we want to do the following. We want to map the two uh, scalar fields to, uh, to a Schwinger using the Schwinger algebra trick. The uh, raising operator, we can call it L plus, the lowering operator, this structure, this is for the bosons. The LZ, which is, uh, uh, which in this case would be uh, the difference between the NA and B, that is the number of the uh, excitations in the A level minus the number of excitations in the B level. Total L will be this uh, uh, expression, and if one substitutes uh, uh, this expression into this, this uh, transition, this uh, interaction terms, so we have instead of the uh, term in the middle, N plus and I, L plus, and minus in the second one, uh, and, and we use the fact that L plus is roughly like if the I theta with some corrections, for M which is much, much smaller than L, uh, we get e to the I theta. So this term essentially is exactly the interaction term and this was to call a CQED or the realization of a discretized uh, um, electromagnetism. So now to this picture we have to add also photons and uh, 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 fermions. So we, we want to couple uh, uh, the bosons to fermions. So we have a set of fermions which how is going to uh, look like in, in a real experiment. So if we had only fermions uh, 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 which are situated at the surfaces, we will need to have two types of fermions, so, so the uh, structure of the lattice will, will be such that there are those red fermions structured on the left side and the right, and, and the green one structured on the right side. 
and there is a certain, uh, a certain gap. Uh, the reason that we have uh, those different uh, energies for these two is that one has to implement a, has to have a minus one to the n phase, which is uh, this is uh, related to the proposal of the uh, Saskin uh, of realizing fermion, so called the staggered fermion uh, construction. Well, in spin up fermions, are, are described by a cell. The up and down space fermions are described by a single a cell where up and down are transformed to right and left in space uh, location for the, for the fermions. That's one way to, uh, to obtain fermions on the lattice. Uh, and you now, this is something that is that so could be thought also in connection to condensed matter. Uh, 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 the ingredients of H is the mediators, which means that in the middle of uh, each link, of, of each link, we need to add another uh, potential, another super potential, uh, which can hold uh, two species, those are the A and B, which means that each time that uh, we have a, a, a C, a D hoping to C, so something is hoping from here to here, we need to have uh, along with it something which in the middle, this bucket in the middle, uh, uh, one particle hops from the A level to the B level. So something like this will amount exactly to the interaction which corresponds to a U1 uh, compactivity or an interaction between two particles along a longer link. I have very little time, so I'll do it uh, kind of first of all. Can I have uh, um, I don't want to take a uh, uh, Okay, so, so let's do it kind of quickly. So the same idea can be generalized to, to non-abelian links. I'm not going to details, but just tell you that actually it gives some insights um, of the way that one, uh, uh, as John mentioned, one of the interesting things here is that once you understand how to realize something like this in an analog system, one gets also an insight on how non-abelian physics works. So, uh, so instead of having a phase here, one has here a non-abelian uh, uh, matrices, non-community matrices. And the, and the structure of, of instead of having the just uh, uh, just uh, uh, states of, of electric field, uh, one has a structure that looks like more or less uh, a direct product of left and right uh, uh, system. It's a bit like uh, uh, EPR pairs, but EPR pairs with different values of J. So it's, it's like having a bell state with a given. Uh, uh, with maximal entanglement with a given j, so j could be one half, one, three half, etc., half integer and integer, uh, 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 summed over the, the full values of j. So this is a it looks like a tower of uh, uh, maximally entangled states. And what is the non abelian charge here? So uh, we know that we can have an EPR pair here, uh, uh, and if we apply a local rotation here on one side, like applying a, 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 the opposite rotation to the other side, the, the relative angle of those EPR pairs are essentially described in this picture of the charge, the non abelian charge, which is carried by, uh, by this link. And more generally, what we have here is an algebra, uh, a left side and right side algebra of, of a non abelian operator, which commute, the left side commutes to the right side. And this is not surprising if you look. We look here because there are essentially operators which sit on the right side or on the left side of the sort of EPR pairs uh, along, along the link, therefore, these two sets commute. So one can realize something like this in a similar, uh, similar uh, way, but it's a bit uh, uh, experimentally, would be much more demanding. So the simplest case would be to, to, uh, to walk in the, uh, to truncate actually the, the, the local input space of the, of the non abelian field to the lowest non trivial case. Which uh, involves five five states, five bosonic states. Uh, uh, why am I allowed to truncate? Well, this satisfies the exact one of being algebra, and the idea would be that if one has bigger and bigger blocks, eventually why would get recover the full input space of the full theory. So in this situation, uh, again, the, the non-abelian gauge invariance is mapped into conservation of the uh, internal statistics. The other ways to do it. Uh, is to separate the links into right and left and, and, and structure, but I will skip it. And I'll say, uh, tell you shortly how do, uh, we are uh, obtaining this. Okay. So, we call that we have to have some nonlinear term, nonlinear interactions, in this case, forward interactions, which, which give rise to the non trivial uh, uh, part of the theory. And, and this is the hardest part here. 
So uh, one idea to do is to be the fun. Suppose we uh, already generated managed to, to obtain the uh, locally gauge invariant links structure where, where uh, fermions are interacting with non-linear, with, with a, a non-abelian or abelian field. Then one could add extra degrees of freedom sitting on the vertices, which are uh, 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 confined to a certain point. So, so they are unable to move, but still they are able to perform some virtual uh, processes like tunneling along the, the link. If they are designed in such a way that once they cross uh, a certain, uh, a certain uh, uh, field here, they interact in the same gauge invariant way, one obtains that, uh, uh, that uh, okay, that the, the second, the first process uh, uh, does nothing, the second process does nothing as well, but if this uh, fermion actually completes a, a circular motion, it collects the, the, uh, the, the AD flux here inside, and the, the thing that they collect is essentially uh, exactly the plaquette term as a, as a result of this uh, virtual uh, process. Uh, in this way, it turns out that one can uh, generate uh, uh, essentially both discrete abelian and non-abelian groups. So in theory, one can obtain something like this, uh, what one wants, but in practice this would be really complicated because this theory is uh, here, uh, uh, fourth order perturbation, which essentially turns out to be equivalent to a second order perturbation, but still it's very, very hard to, like, to get something like this. So in practice one would need something similar, which, are, which is, is something different, which might be more uh, practically realizable, which is to go perhaps to a, a, a model which involves a digital sort of a, a sort of a mechanism of generating a, these, uh, these interaction terms. So this is a bit similar to the first discussion. We have here a model which can uh, which can generate using only two body interactions, a four body interaction. But here it works also, also for non sparse sparse matrices. That is, it applies also for uh, for uh, the case that we have uh, non linear strong interactions, non linear interactions. In this case, we have uh, the idea is that we have uh, three levels, where in the, in, in the, in the upper level we have the, the bosonic degrees of freedom on the left, and the lower level we have the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, fermions sitting in the vertices, and in the middle levels we have uh, a degree of freedom which is sort of an ancilla, which is traveling along, along each plaquette and generating the interaction, uh, is the mediator that generates the interaction between the uh, boson, bosons and fermions. And this can be done systematically to obtain uh, interactions. Uh, uh, so I, I, I just uh, show a picture of how it works. So we want to have both the uh, uh, plaquette terms. And so the plaquette terms, it looks like this. It's kind of, uh, uh, we move the, the middle layer in such a way that we interact each time only between, uh, only with one, one particle along the, along the, the, the plaquette. And if one does it uh, uh, step, one step to another, and, and uses a certain trick that uh, I'll have to skip here, tells out that something like this is essentially a, a gives rise to, a, to the plaquette interaction one wants to generate. This is a, a schematic view of uh, how we use the authorization uh, to have a, 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 to generate one step along a lattice for a Z3 a Z uh, model. Uh, and and the uh, error bound in this case is, is the Zorinda step. It, uh, it looks at, like e to the third divided by n to the number of steps, and it scales like l to the sixth, where, where l is the, is the uh, length scale. So it's like uh, uh, the length, uh, the, the area to the three halves. Okay. Um, okay, experiments uh, in, in a few moments. So up to now, I had uh, only three slides that I could show for experiments. So, so uh, uh, these experiments were about five or six years ago, so uh, uh, where people actually demonstrated they can have a high precision and, and the ability to see a single atoms on the lattice and manipulate single atoms uh, on the lattice. But now I can tell you that uh, there are real uh, experiments which are uh, more along the line of, uh, of performing real, uh, real uh, lattice scale steel simulations. Uh, the first two experiments were actually done with uh, with ions and the group of the of the Reinhard Blatt at Info. Uh, it was only very few ions and essentially describes only two cells of the of the one-dimensional lattice. Uh, but something uh, perhaps uh, closer to the spirit of, uh, of having a lattice gate theory. So this is the this is a simulation of a one-dimensional lattice gate theory without the gauge field, I guess. 
uh, is going on at Robert Tyler School at uh, Heidelberg. And, uh, and, and, uh, and it turns out that they, uh, they discovered how to uh, do exactly the scheme that we, we suggested, having two species, uh, one species for the bosons, one species for the fermions. And here we see their, their version of how uh, the matter degrees of freedom are, are, are popping from one vertex point to another. Why, why uh, the bosonic degrees of freedom are, 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 are popping down uh, locally to check the angular momentum corresponding to the electric field. And, uh, and the two atoms are, are, are uh, sodium and lithium atoms. So this is something which is on the way, undergoing, on the way, and, and, and just closing the remarks. And so where is it going? So, so um, thinking about the uh, confinement as the, as, the, as the benchmark of something not even going on here, uh, then it's true that the uh, uh, one plus one dimensional Schrodinger model is already manifest confinement, but in a sense this is a trivial sort of confinement, and the, and the model is uh, is exactly solvable or almost exactly solvable. So this is interesting, nice, but still not trivial. But if one can go one step further, or even without non abelian fields, uh, uh, one has uh, CQED into plus one dimensions, which is already uh, a theory which is confined. And uh, in three plus one dimensions, uh, it, it's confining and there is a phase transition. And the ZN models uh, as, as a non trivial structure, again, in three plus one dimensions of uh, electric confinement and confinement and, and, and magnetic confinement. So even without going to non abelian fields, which is going to be and harder, we already have a very rich structure to, to, to go through. But the, the major problem is going to be to, to make this a, a, a step going from one dimensional systems where here at least people are all, all, almost there, uh, to, a, to a, a, a higher dimensional systems where we really have non-linear interactions of plaquettes. Uh, maybe to say a few words about the groups which are working in this field uh, at the moment. So there are a couple of groups uh, in in uh, in, Europe, uh, uh, in Barcelona, in Co, uh, Innsbruck, Zoller and and and, and Black, uh, University of Bern, Wiese, uh, uh, Heidelberg, the group is doing this experiment, this nice experiment, the uh, uh, in this group, and, and of course as we have a uh, success and here quite important uh, along a slightly different direction. And there is a complementary study, which is the, all these groups are actually doing uh, 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 simulations of lattice gauge theories in, in, in actual systems. It doesn't have to be necessarily atoms, but other uh, uh, forms of uh, other systems have been used as well. But the complementary study involves uh, uh, tensor networks, which are, uh, which are uh, classical methods of computing uh, uh, states of the uh, states of uh, lattice gauge theory. So far it was used uh, in one plus one dimensions, but actually in fact now uh, people are trying to extend it to non trivial situations in two plus one in uh, uh, dimensions. In this case completely different, but still people are trying to implement a uh, uh, local gauge theory in two plus one uh, dimensions, uh, at least to the group it remains. So, so it seems that uh, uh, all this effort is kind of making an interesting progress and, uh, and hopefully it will get to, to even to uh, 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 non trivial things which we uh, think is something about uh, uh, in general on physics and uh, etc. So, so in here I'll, I'll, I'll stop and thank you.